The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the happy Monday of July the 15th. And we are taking a look at the German DAX, folks. This thing was rocking and rolling so much last night, you wouldn't have believed it. We opened lower and immediately rallied 150 pips, which is a lot in the DAX, and came down and actually... Uh, this is a little bit late because it did go down and make a new low down there at 122 and change. We're trading at 123.60 uh, or so, 70 right now, but that was really wild. I mean, straight up and straight down and virtually not much news uh, involved at all. So that market's pretty, uh, pretty wild. So we need to pay pretty close attention to that if you're following the German DAX. Now, if we take a look at the FTSE, FTSE was a little bit the same way, but not nearly as much volatility as we're seeing with the uh, with the German DAX. These are both hourly charts, and you can see the difference here. There was really not much movement in the FTSE versus the other, uh, versus the German DAX. So we'll see. The DAX, of course, is in a downtrend. Uh, they're both in downtrend since, uh, you know, July the 2nd. But, uh, you know, they're at relatively strong support as we come in here today. So we'll pay sort of close attention to that. Uh, folks, I, you know what? It's time for me and Walter to head out into the desert, and I'll tell you why. I turned on Bloomberg this morning to see what was going on, and these two lovely ladies, one from New York and another one from London, were on. I believe they most might have been 27 years of age, and they were telling us about the wonderful situation going on in Europe about negative interest rates. They knew now, you know, it was not bad enough to have negative interest rates on corporate paper. Now they have negative interest rates on junk bonds. Where's Mike Milken when we needed him? Folks, have I lost my mind? I mean, you know, I look at this and I say, you know, people tell me, yeah, this is going to be it because of inflation and all this. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Why would you give someone money and pay them to, to take the money and they're not going to give anything back. I mean, that, that breaks every single rule from 7,000 years that I can ever figure out. This is ridiculous. The most, well, you know, i got to get off my soapbox. I, I just, look, I want to bring a couple things historically to you, okay? Back in the, back in the late 70s, Milken became, uh, he worked, he started in 72 at, uh, at Drexel. I started in 76. He, in tremendous success. He had a great idea. He, his idea was to change junk bonds' names into high-yielding bonds because interest rates were going through the roof. You know, you had AAA uh, corporate bonds in uh, California yielding 16% tax-free. Uh, they they were callable. That was a problem. They only lasted for two years. But and interest, you know, the the tre Treasury bonds were trading for 54. They're 154 now. So uh, interest rates were very, very high. His idea was if they had a, a company that needed money, they would call them high-yielding bonds instead of junk bonds. And that worked, and it did really, really well. Uh, and it would have still worked if he hadn't have gotten greedy and got into, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that stuff, insider trading and stuff. So anyway, that's the thing. That's that's what we're that's what we're looking at here is this this interest rate situation. Now we're having a little bit of a bounce today in bonds. We're still down four handles from the high. I believe that high that we made back there at 157 in those bonds is going to be a high that's going to be, you know, held held there for a long time. But you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm totally wrong. You know, that's all I can tell you. Uh, the Treasury, you know, the uh, British pound trade is working really good. I suggested, you know, last night that you might want to take profits because it's up about a thousand bucks, you know, from the bottom, which is a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good move and buy it back on a little bit of a pullback. Whether that'll work or not, I don't know. But, you know, nobody else does either. But as I was listening to these two young ladies talk, it reminded me of a situation that happened to me here 20 years ago in Tucson. Jerry Pegden, who uh, had worked for Henry Kaufman at Solomon Brothers, he was a Ph.D. from Yale, 
And he was a right-hand man for Henry Kaufman. And Jerry was one of my students, and I taught him, you know, how to trade the S&P and the euro and stuff. And he came out here to live, and he became friends with um, uh, Bob Miner. And he and Bob worked together and put together the Dynamic Trader. But on one of the evenings that we were out kibitzing, he was telling us the story about how junk bonds were viewed by Solomon Brothers. They were having this meeting in the 19, uh, late 1970s. Uh, and uh, it was a, it was at the partnership meeting for Solomon Brothers, and Henry Kaufman. And if you're back in those days, you don't. Henry Kaufman was equivalent to uh, uh, Bernanke and all these guys. He wasn't a Fed chairman, but boy, when he talked, everybody listened to that dude. Uh, he really did. And he got up and he said, "If we decide to go into junk bonds." At Solomon Brothers, my partnership is available right now for sale at 50 cents on the dollar. Jerry said you could have heard a pin drop. He said there were 20-some people in the room, and he said everybody was just struck and like lightning. And, uh, and he picked up his, his papers, and they walked out of the room, and um, they never went into it. Jerry said that one of his friends who was in the room, the comment was after um, um, – Henry Kaufman left the room. One of the partners got up and he said, well, he said, if that tight SOB doesn't want us to go into it, I don't want to have anything to do with it either. And the vote was 22 to nothing that they didn't go into junk bonds. And that saved them a great deal of money. They wouldn't have had any problem like what Drexel did because that was mainly based on insider trading and a lot of other things that didn't didn't work out good. But that's I don't want to get any get into it any longer. But you know, when I was watching these two young ladies uh, giving their speech, I remember what Art Cashin told me once when I uh, saw him back in New York, and he repeated it on CNBC more than once. He said, uh, "He said I always have trouble taking advice from people uh, that are not old enough to shave." And he said that includes the girls, and I, the, everybody at CNBC, absolutely broke up on that. But um, anyway, I just doesn't make any sense to me at all. But we'll see, you know, how these things actually work in the long term. We'll have to wait and see. No guests today, folks. Uh, I think we got guests out last week doing a double show, but we'll watch it. Keep a close eye, folks, on the crude oil. That is one of the things that we have on our watch list this week. We also uh, have a watch list on the grains there due to top. They were higher overnight, and then they started to roll over a little bit. So that's another one that we want to be looking to be a buyer. If we could get a three- to five-day pullback in that, I think it would be uh, something to look at. When we come after we get to the break, we'll talk about the uh, the stock <laughs> peak oil. That's right. I can remember that, Marshall, when the Goldman Sachs came out with their special report of $200 a barrel crude oil back in uh, 08 when it was topping at 144 And, uh, boy, that was... Uh, that was a big move. I had, I did I had a lot of fun in that one. Anyway, we'll we'll watch these uh, as we unfold today. The gold and silver still in tight trading ranges. We'll discuss those uh, when we come up to the break. But right now, what we got to do? I think we've got a break coming up here, if I'm not mistaken. Here, when the old music starts, and we get back from that, we will talk a, a little bit about the gold and a little bit about the silver, and then we will find out, you know, what direction we're we're looking at in some of these things. So, nothing really exciting today. Market making a little bit higher high. I'll discuss that too next. That's what we'll do. Is we'll talk about the stock market next, then we'll go into gold. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. music uh, I don't know what I did wrong but uh, hmm the old uh, the old uh, technical difficulties uh, I don't know if you folks can hear me or not Larry Pesavento has just wow. started his brand new service Fibonacci 24/7 and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's open uh, and even on weekends each Monday well, all I hear is commercials in the background well anyway take a look at this Bitcoin it looks like it's getting down to this level. Uh, we're at real critical level now at 10,200. And uh, that's a small ABCD look at it. Remember, this is an hourly chart, so you get quite a bit of action in it. So uh, pay attention to that. That might be very interesting. But I would be waiting for the longer one at 8,800. Folks, I have never put a dime into this uh, particular thing, so we'll have to wait and see. I do have some good news, and that is I am going to be working hand-in-hand uh, -hand here at the old Pueblo in Tucson, Arizona, with my good friend John Jameson, who's going to be coming over to visit me, and um, we're going to do just like we did with old Mark Douglas. We're going to work every day, the usual 12, 14 hours a day. John has got some of the most exciting things I've seen. He's going to tell me a little bit more about cryptocurrencies, not that it'll help because that stuff is uh, three or four levels beyond my pay grade, but 
it's going to be interesting to see some of the other things that he's done with uh, the markets. It's just uh, uh, using the opening price is one of the things. You know, I will have him on the show, yes, because uh, the time difference will be will, will no longer be a factor. But that's uh, I know I, I, if I can get him to do it, but I'll get him to come in and we'll have a uh, we'll have a session here or two because he's really smart. Just let me give you an idea how he thinks on some of these things, folks. When he's looking at patterns, he just doesn't look at them. You know, like we do, you know, just straight X, Y. He looks on as a 3D. And one of the things he looks at is this happens to be the euro. And I, I, do, I can't explain all this stuff because it's just too, uh, it's all pattern and ratio and volume. He has a volume price oscillator that he used there that as prices move, uh, you know, the volume, you know, fill, fills, fuels the thing. And when there's no volume there, you can still have big moves. But those are some of the things that he's doing. And uh, he's um, he's been my well, he was my student 16 years ago, and I've kept close contact with him all these years. So that's it. Okay, we covered the Bitcoin. Let's get over to the uh, to the stocks. I wanted to bring this to your attention. This comes from our friends over at Stock Charts. I do some work for them every once in a while with uh, some of the other folks like John Murphy and stuff. But this is the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. You'll see uh, it has not made a new high. It's still below the high. Remember, this is the biggest, broadest of all the indices is the NYSE. If you notice that the New York uh, Stock Exchange advanced decline line did make new highs, and you'll notice the NASDAQ did make new highs, and you'll notice that the advanced decline line on the NASDAQ did not make news, new highs, on this, but this is just possibly a divergence that may or may not mean anything. I I don't know, but you know the best part of it, nobody else does either. So that's the main thing. But if we look at the, just take a look at the Russell, folks. Now, Russell was very, very quiet last week. And if we take a look at this, you'll be able to see here's where we are. We do have a potential head and shoulders pattern here in the Russell. Now, remember, this is when the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ are making new highs. So this could be major divergence. This is a small cap, so pay attention to that. I want to show you one other chart uh, in just a second, but I remi want to remind you that uh, the volume that we've had on this move, especially the last few days, has been very, very sparse. Uh, the open interest is still going up in the stock industry futures for the S&P, but not for the others. The NASDAQ and the Dow Jones and the, and the um, Russell have not had – well, the Russell's had small increases in open interest, but nothing – like uh, what we're seeing in the, the S&P 500. But since we were looking at that, I want to bring back history a little bit. Here is a chart from Bert Doman of the Wellington Letter. I've known Bert for a long time. Actually, I worked with him for a short period of time when he was in Hawaii. And let's get this up here and take a look at this. I want you to show that this is the value line index. This is, you know, I didn't even know they still had the value line index. Back in 1983, the value line index was higher than the NASDAQ. And Byron Tucker put on a spread. He sold the value line index and bought the NASDAQ as a spread. It was some ridiculous figure. It was way up there. And that thing made a lot of money over the next six months. If Byron would have just walked away, uh, that, well, you, you can imagine what it's done. But you'll notice here there's a big divergence here. And the, the value line is basically made up of 1,600 stocks from the New York Stock Exchange Index and the American Stock Exchange, which are really small companies. So I can't really say too much about this. The one thing I do want to mention here is if you look at that blue line, that, that uh, what we show as the 21 line, that is, uh, you know, hanging in there pretty good. So this might be very, very interesting here, you know, to pay attention to this. We'll see if that's it. We'll uh, have to work and see whether that'll work out uh, over a period of time. But anyway, that's just another indicator that there is some divergences happening in the market at this level. But, you know, heaven only knows, uh, you know, where it's going to go from here. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, we just almost made a new high here uh, in the crude oil. Let me double check to make sure we didn't. I thought we were going to get close to it. Nope, we haven't done it yet. But uh, we're in an area here where crude oil needs to be uh, looked at uh, from the short side, in our opinion, because it's up against this major resistance. If we get above the 6160 level in the crude oil, then I would say, yeah, we're probably going to go a little bit higher. But right now, the odds are saying that we should be looking at a potential here for a move in on the downside in crude oil, whether that's going to happen or not. You know, we'll we'll have to uh, let the market tell us. Okay, let's move on to the uh, the gold and silver. Uh, we'll put up the gold here first to take a look at it. Uh, here, I'm using a four-hour chart in the gold. 
And the reason for that is it's real easy to see. We're trading around 1413, 1414 right now. We got up to 1419 last night, which was a 61% retracement from the high two days ago at 429 so we're making these little series of lower highs possibly lower lows but i really believe that we got a chance and i say this with uh, tongue in cheek of course to get down to that 1380 level which is the 382 of the whole move that's the one that i'd be looking at but if we start to get high uh, strong in here and start closing above 1442 uh, you got to pay attention to that gold market, folks, because that thing could uh, really, really take off. You know, it's got a, it's got all the things necessary to make it go higher. You know, they've been hammering it for a long time with all kinds of uh, news, whatever you call it. But um, the gold has got possibilities to the upside. Right now, we're just in this trading range since June 24th, and so you know nothing's really happened yet. But that last move down, if we could get one more move down to 1380, it would really be uh, really be a beautiful pattern. So let's pay a few bills for Tom O'Brien. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I posted the chart for the high-grade, high-yielding bonds, junk bonds, HYG, and as you can see, we did pop up above that 78% level, um, and it's certainly, it's all interest rate related. Even the utilities uh, continue to hover up here, even though we've made this uh, three-drive to a top pattern in the utilities, it still hasn't gone down as of yet, so we'll have to watch that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I focused too much on that negative interest rate stuff, folks, but people ask me questions about it, and I frankly, you know, I, it just does not make any sense to me. So I'm, you know, Byron has tried to explain to me why it could happen, but nah, I'm just too old to figure it out, I guess. I, my guy, Okay, let's move on here to take a look at the platinum market. Someone's asked us to take a look at platinum. Platinum used to be the leader. Now it's not doing very much. We're still in this little bit of a downtrend, slight uptrend. And we had three higher bottoms here during May, June, and July. So that does have a positive bias, as does silver. Silver is acting like it could go higher, too. And I believe if we can get silver above $16 an ounce, which I think we're going to get sometime, it would be pretty be pretty easy to do. Now, the thing that the precious metals have going for them, if the, we have very low interest rates, for one thing, that means the carrying charges for holding these things, in other words, the storage and insurance, uh, you know, insurance is lower because the prices are much lower. And so they don't have to worry about the, uh, the carrying charges on some of this stuff. So that makes it easier to hold these longer term. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a short term trader, you know, long term to me is uh, uh, eight, eight thirty. Well, well, it's 6.30 here. Anyway, let's move on to uh, uh, another question that someone's asked us, and that is about one of the FANG stocks. I want to bring it up here to uh, take, talk about it because this is one of the charts we were looking at this past week. This is Netflix, and all we were looking at here is you can see that there is a, a little cycle component that's been there, and you'll see it has been – been pretty nice over the last three cycles, and it usually, it usually only works for three, and we're in the second one right now. And the, you can see Netflix sold off from that level at 385. We're down at uh, 373. So that's what that cycle looks like. That's just a sine wave counting the number of days between February and May and May into July. That's all that does. It just counts that and draws it on there to show you that what the symmetry of the market is. Now, if you were to expand this over to the left, it would show you that the, the first part of this cycle actually started on the exact bottom of December 26th. And that's the problem that you have as these things shift back and forth. And even though the harmony is there, you know, it, when it's a high, it could be making a low and vice versa. That's why you've got to look at it as a potential turning point. And that, that's what I do when I try to look at some of these, uh, these astro formations that we look at. And speaking of that, we have a, you know, a beautiful lunar eclipse and full moon tomorrow. So that'll be really quite nice. So uh, that'll usually bring some more activity into it. And as Norm mentioned to us uh, last week is that usually uh, solar eclipses, and, excuse me, lunar eclipses and, and full moons have a negative indication on stocks for a few days. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. Okay, here's uh, David White's giving us some information about the operator of Bitcoin Exchange. Bitfunder is sentenced to 14 months in jail for fraud and lying to investors. Oh, my goodness. How could that be? Holy cow. I think my beeper is going off in crude oil now. What's it going off in? No, 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 no. Oh, it's in the bonds. Good, good. I'm waiting for the bonds to get up there and see how we get to that 154 level. And we'll see how that looks. So we'll pay uh, close attention to it. And we'll be uh, looking at something uh, in the future here on that. I wanted to cover one other of the FANG stocks, if you'll bear with me here for a second here, because this one I think is important because it just got a $5 billion fine, and I wanted to see how much it's up after the $5 billion. This is uh, Facebook, and it, you know, we're almost ready to fill the gap up there at 214, folks. That was that big island reversal. Yeah, who would ever have thunk it, Bitcoin being uh, – you know, there's so many scams going on in that stuff. But, you know, it really – it really, the scammers must be uh, following harmonic stuff because the, you can see the Bitcoin chart's beautiful. You know, I, I'm sure you could probably trade it on some of these things. I, I'm just too busy doing the other stuff. But uh, it follows the numbers really well. You know, I, you know, that's all I can tell you. I don't know if it means anything or not, but it certainly follows them pretty good. We'll have to 
to wait and see. The one thing I did want to mention uh, when we posted that chart about the uh, advanced decline and stuff, folks, that market, the stock market has moved up this past week basically on 80 stocks. There's about 30 stocks in the uh, S&P 500, four or five in the Dow Jones, and the rest in the NASDAQ. And those are the ones that have been pulling it up because those are the ones that are cap weighted. And the heavier weighting in the cap gives them more weight, so the little stocks don't get any weight at all. So that's why that uh, situation is relatively important. And finally, the last one I wanted to show you with the FANG stocks. Here is the uh, Google. As you can see, we're almost up to a 50% retraceable in the Google. Really nice ABCD pattern in here. And uh, it should be an area where we should have some really good uh, resistance up here at this 1165 uh, level, which is about 20 bucks from where we are uh, right now. I don't know where it is. It might be above that this morning. But the news was out basically on Facebook. By the way, did where is Facebook trading now, folks, with that $5 billion fine? I figure it's down about a quarter of a penny or something like that, isn't it? I don't know. Someone... Please tell me where Facebook is trading because I'd like to uh, just to know how much the news has affected it. Uh, Facebook, is it 202? Oh, it's down. No. Facebook got to 202? I'm sure it was high. It was 187 on Friday. Is that correct? Wow. Holy cow. Man, that's a big surprise. Are you sure Facebook got to one? Uh, David, double check that for me. I know you're you're meticulous for for your accuracy, but double check where Facebook is trading. It is trading there at 204. Wow, what's wrong with my what's wrong with my Facebook chart? Oh, brother, old age is creeping in. Hold on just a second here. Boy, that's a. I you know I don't. It must not have refreshed. Oh, no, I had Facebook at 204 is where I had it closed. I'm sorry. Yeah, it closed at 204. It's okay, and it's down 2 bucks. So that's, a, that's right. It's okay. So $5 billion is equivalent to about 2 bucks. No big deal. All right. Now, regarding the commodities, uh, we got some uh, weather out there. It's been really nice. Grains were called higher last night. They were higher. The weather changed a little bit. Now they're down a little bit. We just completed some nice smaller patterns in the ABCD, so kind of keep an eye on those because I think we'll have a little bit of a buying opportunity coming in here, and we'll be able to see, uh, to see this thing uh, un unfold as we, uh, as we walk through here. Uh, I also wanted to uh, let me give you a, uh, show you this chart here from Bert Doman, who, who uh, runs the Wellington letter. It's a letter. It's a really expensive letter, but quite good. You'll notice that he's showing the, uh, the false breakout potential here, based on this index that he's looking at. Unfortunately, I don't see what the name of that index happens to be. He sent me the chart. Oh, it's the Dow Jones Transportations. So it's showing you the divergence in the Dow Jones Transportations versus the th – we, we do that in our letter every week. I'll bring that up to show you because we do have a, a real interesting potential here in the uh, Dow Jones Transportations of uh, – fulfilling a uh, head and shoulders pattern and just slightly higher today would make it equal to the high we had in February. Well, we have to pay a few bills here. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, during the break, um, a good friend, uh, Byron Tucker, was kind enough to forward this article coming out of the UK uh, showing the uh, junk-rated bonds and how some of them are moving into zero interest rates. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what's happening. But negative yielding bonds is uh, just unbelievable. This happening in Europe. So things must be uh, uh, pretty hard to get money over there if they're trying to get negative interest rates. I don't understand it. But, you know, honest to God, folks, when I <laughs> – let's forget it. I, you know, I don't have anything to say about it, don't know anything about it, so let's move on to something else that we want to pay attention to. Let's pay attention here to this, uh, this British pound, folks. Let's just take a look at this. You'll see here that uh, the uh, British pound has had this really nice uh, four- or five-day rally off of that low 2440. Uh, we were saying that uh, – to take profits in part of the position last night and then uh, to put the stop at break even on the rest of it. That's a three drive to a bottom pattern. It's also a double bottom going back to last January. That makes it real easy to uh, to see if it's going to hold that level because if it gets back below there again, the next level on the British pound is down about 118. So we can see that occurring quite a bit. Um, also, uh, uh, Ruby, I don't know if you're here with us today, but uh, pay close attention to the sugar, Ruby. This is trade I saw this morning. It was trading at uh, that magical. We're going to look at uh, October sugar because that's the one that is uh, that is the the best of the group. If I can just find there, it is here's sugar. Let's get this October sugar up so you can take a look. We're down trading here, uh, right about this level tonight or this morning. So take a quick look at that because that completes an ABCD. Uh, that's a nice Gartley down in there. Should be really strong support at 12 bucks, but uh, you only have to risk $200 in that, folks, because it's 11.25 a point. So 20 points, you're risking about $250 to see if you're right or not. If it goes below 11.80, it's sayonara because you don't want to be in it if it goes below that because you know it could easily extend down to 1.27 you know or 1.618 those are you know some of the things that uh, you might want to remember when you're trading it's all about risk control not about how much money you make it's about how much money you don't lose and that's the that's part of the key you know to what we're looking at i've also had a request to take a look here at uh, the palladium which i've never traded know very little about it and you'll be able to see here that we uh, – this is a long-term weekly. You can see the ABCD pattern that we have up here. The key to this is if you look in the middle of the chart, 
You see the beautiful ABCD pattern competing here, completing here in August of last year. Uh, two, excuse me, yeah, 2018. That's a beautiful move coming in right at a 382 retracement of the, excuse me, 50% retracement of the move from 2016. Bada bing, bada boom. We've made a double top in platinum, folks. Uh, we went up, to, uh, we took out those old highs and immediately reversed. That puts the qualification of a double top in there. So that gives that a negative, uh, negative uh, spot to look at it. So that's another one that we want to, uh, to pay attention to. All righty. Now, oh, my goodness, um, Al's telling me that the phone lines are all jammed up. Lights are lighting everywhere. We got one, two, three, four, five, seven people waiting to call in, and uh, we'll have to handle them one at a time. And the first uh, caller was going to ask us about the NASDAQ, and I bring the NASDAQ up here to take a look at it. Now, this is, you know, this is only a few stocks, folks, out of that 100 there's only about 20 or 25 that run the whole show, and we uh, went into new high ground again last night, so that'll be interesting to see whether that one holds up or not. But that's uh, that's what we're looking at as we're seeing some of these things here this morning. I did want to share with you, I have to tell you the story. This is, uh, well, I'll just bring this up to your attention here from yesterday. This was from one of our uh, one of our new students. Uh, this is a 15-minute uh, chart on the E-mini, and uh, you'll notice uh, where that first arrow is on the, the lower red hour. It shows a three-drive to a, a bottom pattern, A, B, C, D pattern. It's a 78% level off of point C. It's also a 382 off of point A, and it pointed to a price level of 30.17, and uh, the market went uh, moved up those 30-some points and made that level, plus it made a little bit more last night, got up to 30, uh, 23. I think we're trading it a little bit below that now, but that's uh, that was a that was a pretty much a perfect pattern, and uh, it lines up just as nicely as you could possibly see it. The problem that he has is he doesn't believe it, and he's only seen it once. And uh, the key to this is once you start to look at these, and anybody that knows how to do this, you don't have to have those lines on the chart once you understand what's happening. The lines just jump out at you. But you have to learn what those lines mean before it means anything to you at all. That's my two cents worth. So we'll see how that works out in the long run. Uh, also, the, uh, the the hogs, folks. There's some uh, possibility here. We've got December hogs down at a very low level. Uh, I'm going to have Rich Anderson on this week to talk to us about the hog market. Rich is uh, basically retired now. He's gone from 14 hours a day down to 12 hours a day. So he's enjoying his retirement just as much as, as everybody else. So we'll keep an eye on these as we move through. But hogs are look very interesting. Cattle have turned the bottom somewhat. We need to get them about another five cents higher before we are really assured that it's going out. And there's one other market that is really, really ripe, folks. And this could be a, a what I think could be a campaign that I'm going to do for the 24-7 uh, subscribers, and that is in the natural gas. This thing has a really beautiful pattern on the long-term chart here. I'll bring it up here and show you because we recommended the buy here at 225 a week or so ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been two weeks, and uh, you'll notice here we're trading around 243, 244 this morning. And if we can get this market uh, up just a little bit more into the 260 level, uh, that's when you have a pretty good idea that this market has changed direction longer term. And what we will look for is a situation to uh, add to contracts uh, when we get our first correction. We haven't had that as of yet, but when we do get it, that's what we want to be looking for. We don't do campaign trains, trades like this very often because they require a great deal of discipline, and I really mean discipline. And just like doctors, they operate on having patience, right? Well, you have to have patience being a trader, so you've got to wait for these patterns to unfold, and that's what you have to do. Most of your time, you're going to be sitting on your hands waiting for the market to do something. Well, it's much better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. That's the magical number. Did the bonds hit 154, uh, Mitchell or uh, Marshall? I don't show it on my machine yet. Uh, who knows? Maybe they have. Just let me know. Oh, they did. They hit 154. Okay. Uh, well, they haven't filled the old cowboy yet, but we'll see. All right, let's move on here uh, to another uh, one that we want to watch, uh, and that is the uh, the corn market. We're having a uh, – let me just get this up here last night because uh, this is some of the work that we did with uh, John Jameson over the weekend 
that uh, was really, uh, really quite nice. Let's get this up here and take a look at it. You don't see the work here, but I'll, I'll explain to you what we were doing. You'll notice here we had a potential Gartley up here uh, in Christmas corn up here at that 459. Now, we got to 463 and a half last night on a gap up opening, and now we're trading substantial. We're trading about a dime under that. So that might be the indication that that could be a uh, sign of a correction. Now, folks, that is not a head and shoulders pattern. The reason why is, look at the left shoulder. The left shoulder is lower than the right shoulder. That's not a head and shoulders pattern. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. And um, I just wanted to uh, mention to you that the rally back here in these notes and bonds should be watched very, very closely because uh, we've seen a, a big change in open interest on the way up. Open interest is dropping. Now with prices coming down, open interest is increasing. That means that the uh, the weakness that is there is going to increase. 
that's the way they interpret the open interest. Now, sometimes it's wrong, of course, but that's something that you might want to uh, pay close attention to. Very, very uh, important concept. Uh, I've shown you how to do that several times here to check it yourself. Uh, like Twentyman says, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. All you have to do is go to www.cme, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Click on data, and it'll show you volume and open interest. You click on that, move down the one you want to see, like gold or silver or hogs, and it'll show you exactly the number of contracts that are increasing or decreasing in that. That tells you the number of players coming into the market. In the Merc, it's all contract-based. You have to have a buyer for every seller. It's not the way in some of these markets, but that's the way it is with this one. So pay pay close attention to that, folks. I think it's very, very important to understand that. We're now down $0.10 cents in the corn overnight. That sets up a really nice possibility of a move down about another $0.15 cents in corn that I'd like to take a look at from the long side. So sort of pay attention to that one. That'll be a real interesting to look at. And, of course, remember the crude oil. We were talking about the possibility of a, you know, a sale in crude oil. We matched yesterday's highs, and then we've dropped almost a dollar a barrel in the last 20 minutes. So that pretty much tells you that, yep, that 80, uh, 61 level is relatively uh, hard level to look at in the crude oil. So uh, just keep an eye on it because maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but that's some of the things we're looking at. In the currencies, watch that 112 level in the euro, folks. If we ever break that to the downside, that's going to be trouble in River City. But, you know, right now we're trading, uh, you know, 70 pips higher than that. It doesn't appear to be any very much of a problem. So that's what I'd be watching. And the main thing today, folks, is live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and do something nice for somebody else. We'll see you all on the flip side tomorrow.